بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Today's lesson we reach the chapter in which the author may Allah have mercy on him states never mind the masses O student of knowledge Hadith number 40 is narrated Ma'qil ibn Yasar radiallahu anhu the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-ibadatu fil harji ka hijratin ilayya. Worship during times of harj is like immigrating to me. This hadith has been collected by Imam Muslim. Never mind the masses, O student of knowledge. You do your thing, O hadith disciple. What do people think and feel? What's popular and what's trending or trendy? What's acceptable? Among the non-Muslims or non-Muslims or Muslims, you do your thing. That which you know is the truth, that which you're sincere about, you're confident about, that you've studied properly, this is what you believe to be the haqq and the sawab and the rajih, that's what you call to. That's what you propagate. That's what you push. That's what you teach. That's what you practice. That's how you dress. That's how you eat. That's how you walk. Regardless of the majority of the people whom in most cases are nothing or, or nothing more than sheep following the loudest uh, following the, loud, the loudest shepherd the loudest voice looking at the greenest pasture and the most water that's it regardless of the wolves that lay uh, uh, away and that, that lay in ambush for them regardless of some of the problems and the 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 harms and the consequences they just think about their material needs in most cases food and drink Money, their desires, that's it. Popularity, funny, LOL, that's, you know, oh, this is acceptable, this is politically correct. This is modern, progressive, liberal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is quote-unquote balanced, et cetera. Most people, at best. So you don't get caught up with them. If the majority of the people in your community, or your race, or your country, or your masjid, if the masses, if they're following the truth, if they're listening to the truth, then alhamdulillah, that's a blessing. And there's strength in numbers. And there's a blessing in numbers. More people being guided. Alhamdulillah. And if that's not the case, no matter how small, no matter how weak or how few in number, you and your loyal supporters and devotees may be, you keep calling to the truth. You keep supporting the truth. And you keep it, you keep your dawah raw. You keep your dawah raw and organic. You don't water it down. Don't put GMO into it. Don't, don't sugarcoat it. Don't glaze it. For more popularity, for more views, for more likes, for more money, for more acceptance, for more invitations. Never mind the masses, O oh, student of knowledge. As you can see, there's a great amount of wisdom of us putting this chapter in the end of the book. After all of those manners and all of those pieces and sections and selections of etiquette, never ever forget that this style and this way, disciplism, is not for everyone. It's not for every single person. It isn't meant for every person. It's only built for certain people. The other styles are the methods of calling, learning, and teaching, and dawah, and aqidah, and madhabs, and schools, etc. Alhamdulillah. Let them, you know, you do your thing. This here, this way, this understanding, this methodology, this philosophy, this way of thinking, and deducing, and using the hadiths. Sticking to the hadiths and, and extracting from them this formlessness, right? Taking the old with the new, the east and the west, the ancient, the, the classic, the, the classical, the antiquity, and blending it, infusing it with the modern, with the urban, right? That's not for every single person. Everybody isn't going to understand it. Everyone isn't going to respect it. Everyone isn't going to accept it. So you don't get caught up worrying about them, fearing them, or hoping for them. And there are many ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ that tell us about how this ummah will split up and divide. It will separate. It will splinter. And that there will, no matter what the odds are, no matter what's going on, there's always going to be a group that is steadfast, that's brave enough, courageous enough, bold enough to remain upon the truth regardless of man khalafaha, wala man khadalaha, those who oppose this group. Those who forsake this group. That doesn't harm them. That doesn't bother them at the least. Let alone the Quranic ayat that speak about the majority of the people and speak about the different prophets and messengers. Only a few 
believed in and speak about the believers and the groups of the believers who never fear the blame of the blamers and they're never ever worried about uh, those who go against them from the people who oppose the truth or people who are ignorant and follow their desires and follow their forefathers, etc. So that's what's meant by this chapter heading. The hadith of Ma'khil bin Yasar is a very important hadith, like all hadiths are. But it shows us that towards the end of time, there will be harj. And this harj, as it's mentioned in other ahadith, will be abundant killing, will be senseless bloodshed, in which the killer doesn't know why he has killed, and the killed or the murdered doesn't know why he was killed. It's just bloodshed, just kill, just violence. People will drink alcohol in abundance. They'll be getting drunk all day, all night, every day, wherever you go, all cultures, alcohol, wine, liquor, Rice wine, wine that comes from grapes, wheat, potatoes, right? So many different types of wine, spirits, wherever you go. People want to get drink. They want to have a good time. That's it. People want to fulfill their sexual desires. Nothing more. People just want to talk about people and, and cause chaos and confusion and disturbance and further disarray in the world today. Harj will become abundant. Abundant and abundant and abundant. So therefore, those who remain focused, those who make ibadah, those who worship Allah along with any partner, Tawheed, they single out Him in, in their worship, in their dua, in their salah, in their slaughtering, their sacrifice, their raja, their khawf, their tawakkul, all of the acts of ibadah in Quran and Sunnah, they will receive a reward like making hijra to Medina in the time of the Prophet. Those who had left their families, left their tribes, left their clans, those who had abandoned that which was familiar to them and comfortable. And they left it off for that which was uncertain. They had the certainty in their hearts. But the road, where they run into uh, brigands on the road, hijackers, highway robbers, right? Vagabonds, bandits, where they die, where they run out of water, where their animals break down. What is life like in Medina, etc., etc., etc. Where the mushrikun capture them. They, they, it's so many different uncertainties, but they left their homes. They left that which was familiar for that which wasn't so familiar. And that's why they received such a tremendous reward, the muhajirun, the people of hijrah. So if you make ibadah during these times of confusion and ignorance and lusts and murder and violence, you will receive a reward like the one who made hijrah in the time of the Messenger of Allah, according to his authentic hadith. So that is the connection between the chapter heading and the hadith. Don't worry about the majority of the people performing harj, being victims of harj. You perform your ibadah, and this is your blessing, and this is your reward. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely knows best. The last hadith, well actually that's the 40th hadith, so technically th those are the 40 hadiths. And then alhamdulillah we added two additional hadiths. If not, okay, so we have hadith number 41, which is more than 40. Okay, and then the last hadith is food for thought. So there's actually 42 hadiths in this book. And obviously we were uh, imitating the way and the style of Noe in his 40, in which he actually mentioned 42. So hadith, um, or the next chapter, the last chapter, uh, it says the superiority of the people of hadith above all others. Hadith number 41, narrated, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, أَوْلَى النَّاسِ بِيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَكْثَرْهُمْ عَلَيَ صَلَةً The closest people to me on the Day of Judgment will be those who sent the most prayers on me. This hadith has been collected by Abu Isa at tirmidhi The chapter heading is crystal clear, and there's no shame, there's no shyness, and us being biased. There's no doubt about that. We're victims of bigotry here in this book. The last chapter of the book, is talking about the dominance of the people of Hadith. Not the Fuqaha, not the Qurra, the Quran reciters, not the ulama of Aqeedah, not the ulama of Usul, not the ulama of the Arabic language or the Sira, not the callers, not this, not that, Fulan and Fulan, Ahlul Hadith, Ashab al Hadith. Best, period. They're the best. And that's what we believe, and that's what we call to, and that's what we propagate. Ahlul Hadith are the champions, they're on top. The best of the best. And after everything that I've taught you and explained to you and shared with you in this book, we're going to take it back to the asl. And that is the foundation, the bedrock of Hadith disciple 
of this way of thought, this school of thought, this movement, this move, this philosophy, nam, this way of thinking, this da'wah call, this way of life, this culture, is Ahlul Hadith, Ashab al Hadith, as we have explained in many books and many lectures. So therefore, Ibn Mas'ud narrates that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, the people that will be closest to the Prophet on the Day of Judgment, the people that will be in the company of the Prophet on the Day of Judgment the most, and inshallah ta'ala receiving all of those blessings, drinking from his uh, pure uh, held, that lovely fountain, receiving the Prophet sallallahu intercession, being under his flag and banner, and all of the blessings of resurrection with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of judgment day, traveling to the hereafter, to Jannah, inshallah. The people that will receive these things first, they'll be closest to them, in the night ta'ala, will be the people of Hadith. And that is because no one sends prayers upon the Prophet sallallahu more than Ahlul Hadith. And that's because every day, all day, we're reading Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal. Ja'a rajulun ila Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what we're saying all day. You read in Bukhari, how many times are you saying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? In one page, Muslim, Abu Daud, Tirmidhi. All day, every day. You're fed, you're raised upon hadith and ethel. So you're constantly in, in, uh, engrossed with the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So you're only going to say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by default. Over and over and over and over again. Then, of course, this doesn't mean that other Muslims don't say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It doesn't mean that there aren't other disciplines. People of fiqh don't read hadith. People of aqidah don't read hadith. It doesn't mean that. No. It doesn't mean that. Nor does it mean that Ahl hadith have ultimate superiority over the people of the Quran uh, from every single aspect. There are different Muslims who say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in abundance from among the scholars of Islam let alone the worshippers, let alone people of different groups and denominations, whatever names or titles they, they, they're given or they give themselves, whether you call them Sufis or people of Tasawwuf. What's important is they say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they have their times and places in which they send prayers upon the Prophet as well.